uh, the former Secretary of State for Wales, Sir John Redwood. Um, John, the IMF has a record of getting forecasts wrong, but this matters because public policy is made on the basis of IMF uh, and OBR forecasts. Yes, indeed. I think we've got very bad forecasting records from IMF, Bank of England, Treasury, OBR. Uh, they all made the same mistake, I think, over the European Union. They, they attribute far too much significance to trade uh, when we've got a very big domestic economy. And they attribute far too much significance to trade with the European continent and very little significance to the trade with the whole of the rest of the world which has been growing faster, is now bigger and, and is in much better shape in terms of surplus or deficit than our trade with Europe. And their models are weighted. But a far bigger set of errors made by all those three forecasting bodies was, of course, to completely miss the takeoff in inflation uh, in the West. Uh, and then they say, oh, well, it was just the Putin war. Yes, that was a dreadful war. But the same war that drove up global oil prices and gas prices, which hit America and Britain, also should have hit China and Japan, the world's second and third largest economies, but they kept on with inflation around 2% because their central banks did not make the same egregious errors that the ECB, Bank of England and the Fed made, and they didn't have the same false forecasts because those three central banks in the West were always forecasting 2% inflation when I and a few others were saying to them, your policy is going to give us much higher inflation. No, that, that, that's absolutely right. And the IMF continued saying that inflation was going to be a short-term problem until now. And now it's saying the opposite. It's now saying it's going to be a long-term problem. We're yep. going to need higher interest rates for longer. And they may be doing the reverse of expecting inflation for longer than it will actually last mm. and therefore making our monetary conditions unnecessarily tight. I think they are. And, of course, uh, because those three central banks have got inflation wrong, uh, lurched from too much money at uh, zero interest rate to, to too little money at a much higher interest rate. Uh, we now got credit crunch conditions. So in the United Kingdom, uh, it blew up the, the market for pension funds uh, in the so-called LDI funds. And they, the Bank of England had to do a quick about turn. So instead of selling off bonds to depress the prices of these things, it had to go back to buying them for a bit to try and stabilise the market. And in the United States of America, we've had regional bank collapses, two big ones, quite serious ones. And the Fed, again, had to do a flip-flop. It, like the Bank of England, was taking too much money out, selling too many bonds. It suddenly put about $400 billion back into the markets by lending cheap money to the banks. So it's consistently errors of monetary policy based on bad forecasts. What should they be doing instead? How should the economy try and get back to a growth platform? Well, uh, given that people want these so-called independent central banks, forgetting that they're owned by the state and the governors are usually appointed by the governments, um, then we need people who put into those central banks models that are more likely to work. And I, I think the most obvious change they need to make is to treat money and credit seriously. Uh, now, there isn't a, a single formula that says if they print another $100 billion, then there will be so much inflation. But it's nearly always the case that big inflations uh, are led by the creation of a lot of money and credit. And they need to at least monitor that and give us some commentary on it. And if they think they can get away with printing a lot of money because the economy is so flat, they should explain that and be monitored about it. Because currently they're ignoring that completely and the um, spike in monetary production towards the middle of the COVID period has been completely ignored. Yeah. And the Government Bank of England is today blaming the weather for inflation. Yeah, it was quite extraordinary. Uh, and I said he's got to answer why it is that China and Japan didn't have the same inflation problem we did, because if it's a world problem, uh, as they said with the Ukraine war, that's clearly untrue. And they need to answer in the UK why it was that the UK inflation was 5.5% before Putin invaded and drove the Oil and gas prices is higher, so they'd already almost three times target. And I think that was about the, the money they created and the very high price of bonds that they paid in 2021. I was actually a supporter of them creating money and making things easier in 2020 because the COVID lockdowns were so extreme. You, you did need to provide an offset and it wasn't going to be inflationary. But I think carrying that on throughout 2021, when we were having pretty good recovery and lockdown was uh, coming to an end, was a very big mistake. But the IMF's answer for our economic problems is to 
be more internationalists, to try and do more with the international club. As they've got it so consistently wrong, it doesn't seem to you to be precisely the wrong thing to be doing. We need to be focusing on what is in the national interest economically, mm. not how do we um, copy the European Union. Well, indeed, and, and they are wanting more austerity. Now they've made the inflation mistake with the others, so they're saying that we should scrap the triple lock and they're saying that we need tight fiscal and monetary conditions. They're telling the Bank of England to carry on selling bonds at huge losses. I think this is all very bad advice, because I think they've done enough now to bring inflation down. I think we we'll see quite soon that inflation is coming down here, as it's started to do quite quickly in America and to a lesser extent in Europe. And yes, uh, one of the things you can do when you've got an inflation problem, you expand capacity. There's too much demand, not enough supply. And instead, we've been following policies in Britain that have seen designed to stop farmers growing food by giving grants to them to do something different, wilding their land, uh, to stop people producing domestic energy because it's said to be naughty energy. So they'd rather import the naughty energy from abroad and actually create more CO2 in the process. And we are destroying capacity, which we need to keep, get prices down. And I mentioned in passing the dreadful energy bill, which is going to do nothing more than regulate and put up prices for consumers, which is precisely the wrong time to be doing in yeah. a cost of living crisis. No, again, we need more capacity. We, we need more of generating capacity. Instead, they're putting in cables to import more from the continent. We need more of our own oil and gas. Instead, they're importing it in LNG form, which is much more carbon intensive and a lot dearer and a drag on the balance of payments. So, yes, we, we need a, a capacity revolution, an investment revolution. And just to make it worse, the IMF says that our carbon taxes, which are already higher than anybody else's and are killing our industry, have got to go higher. Well, we so mustn't. IMF austerity means fewer industrial jobs in Britain. Well, the lesson is don't listen to the IMF. Thank you very much, Sir John. Remember, I want to hear your thoughts. Mailmog at gbnews.com.